Hey guys, I'm really excited to dive into this topic because it is something that has absolutely changed my life and changed my theology in the recent months, and I'm really eager to share it with you, and that's part of the reason why I haven't been posting videos lately, is I've just really been wanting to make sure that this video is done right. So, I'm going to go ahead and just get, dig in, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you, buckle up, because this is going to challenge you a lot. Um, it really addresses a deep spiritual issue that really deals with a lot of the things in our faith that we don't think about a whole lot or uh, we don't understand why, for example, we don't understand why we get so pulled in by our sinful desires. If we love God so much, why are we so pulled in by the sin in our life? Or why do we get so defeated inside whenever we do go to sin? Or why do we get so obsessive about things that at the end of the day, really don't matter. And this really speaks to that sort of thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm really excited, if you can't tell. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I'm going to start with just asking you a couple of questions, and uh, hopefully you'll, you'll get some time to reflect. If you need to pause the video to really think about the question or write down some things, please do that, because I really want this stuff to marinate as we go through it. So the first question is, can you think of a time you felt the need to justify yourself? Think about that. I know I, I know I can think of times, a lot of times, I just sometimes I just desperately feel like I need to be right. And I know some of you uh, totally get what I'm saying with that. Um, or like, if you feel like people are not understanding you, and you feel like you have to bend over backwards to make sure that they do. That... That's me. I don't know if that's you. Um, second question is, what is something that can make you a better Christian? I know for me, I definitely feel convicted a lot about how much time I spend in prayer and how much time I spend in the Word, like actively seeking God on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I feel very challenged, and I feel like I would be a better Christian if I could do that more. Uh, third question what is something you think makes God proud of you? So think about those things, and it might help you uh, digest this lesson a little bit more. So to get started on this, to get this rolling, we're going to go back to the garden with Adam and Eve and back to the first sin that they committed back in Genesis chapter 3. And... <clears throat> We all know the story, and we'll address a little bit more of it later. I'm not really going to dig into it because I really want to focus on this one verse. Um, but after Satan has tempted them and they have fallen into sin, they ran away from God because uh, they were ashamed. And there's, there's, there's a lot we could talk about there, too. But I really want to look at Genesis chapter 3, verse 7 says, then the eyes of both of them, this is after they had eaten the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, after they've sinned, it says, then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Now, we see this, this sudden panic of, of, oh no, I'm naked, I need to cover myself. Um, <clears throat> now, we all know that scripture is a lot more than just about the face value of things. Scripture is deep and powerful, and it cuts down to the deepest issues that are going on in your life. So when Adam and Eve start freaking out here, um, I think we can assume that there's more going on than, ah, oh no, my genitals are showing, ah! Uh, there's, more, there's more to it than, than just that. Um, there's something deep down inside of them. And this is this was the the moment when a part of the human condition that they started having at that moment and that all of us have had ever since began. It's a part of the human condition. It is a deep seated, desperate panic screaming from the bottom of your soul saying, 
there's something wrong with me. And that's inside every single one of us. Because we, our eyes have been opened, as it said at the beginning of the verse. Our eyes have been opened. We have the knowledge of good and evil. We have the knowledge that there is evil in us. Oh my God, there is something wrong with me. All of us are screaming that in the deepest parts of our souls. And we're desperate for something to cover us, for something to justify us, for something to make us righteous. Um, we're desperate for something, anything. And that's when we start just reaching and grabbing for something, anything, anything to cover us, anything to, to justify us, anything to give us that righteousness that we are craving so much. Because if the very depth of our soul is screaming, there's something wrong with me, the solution is for something to be right with you. For you to be righteous. For you to be justified in, in, in God. And what we do is we go and find all of these security blankets, these coverings, these fig leaves to, to save us. To become our Jesus, to become our covering, to become our righteousness, to become our justification. Did you know that when you go into the original Hebrew text, the words justification and righteousness are differentiated by just a single letter? In fact, the word righteousness is uh, sadakah, and the word justification is Sadak. It's like the only difference is that one of them has a suffix, but they're still the same word. And so when we see that at the root language of God's word, we can assume that there's definitely something linked to these two things, to righteousness and justification. That's what we're desperate for. Because at the bottom of our souls, we're screaming, something's wrong with me. So we need justification. We need to be okay. We need something to do that for us. And in our desperation, we, we, we're we reaching for anything, anything at all that's going to do it. Uh, alcohol, sex, drugs, uh, relationships, um, the hopes of being married one day, um, the, the hopes of being financially secure, um, and the list goes on, of all of these things that you think are going to justify you, of all of these fig leaves that you're trying to cover yourselves with. And when you take this and you look at people and you look at life in general, it starts explaining a lot of things that you might not have realized was the case before. There's a classic example in the New Testament. The reason why the Pharisees were so infuriated by Jesus' message was because he was teaching that their self-righteousness and their moral performance was not justifying them. He was calling them out on their fig leaves, on the very thing that they believed was making them righteous. That was why they were so infuriated by him, and that's why he ended up getting killed. Because his message was threatening to rip away the security blankets, the righteousness, the justification, the sadaqah, that everybody was so comforted in. The covering. This is also why when you see business leaders or politicians beginning to get their careers threatened, you start seeing some of the darkest sides of humanity. Um, this is why when people who are obsessed with their body image start to gain more weight or lose more weight than they wanted to, this is why they panic so much. Um, it, <laughs> explains everything um, and this is the explanation for every 
single sin that you do every single day. Every time you sin, you are reaching for something to hopefully cover you, to hopefully justify you, to give you the righteousness that you're so desperate for. That sin that you're dealing with, or maybe even that secret that nobody knows about, that is a security blanket that's not saving you. And this is the hopelessness of humankind. You know, to, to follow up with that, there was a, a verse in Jeremiah that really jumped off the page to me when I read it last. It's Jeremiah 4.1, and it's a promise God gives. It's an if-then statement. Hey, if you do this, I'll do this. Um, if you do this, then this will happen. It says, and if you will put away your abominations out of my sight, then you shall not be moved. So you won't be moved if you put your abominations out of God's sight. So are you doing that? Are you? Can you? Anybody who's honest with themselves is going to let out a sigh of shame and say, no, I haven't done that, and I don't think I can. And this explains the uh, hopelessness of our situation all too well. Thank God for Jesus. Jesus came in, he sacrificed himself, he bought us from sin, he bought us from death, he bought us from Satan. And he put all of our abominations out of God's sight. And now we shall not be moved. And now we have an absolute covering. Now we have justification, absolutely. It says in Romans, there is no condemnation. None. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. No matter what you're guilty of, you are not condemned for it. How amazing is that? And Paul went a step further when he wrote the book of 2 Corinthians. This, in my opinion, is one of the most beautiful verses in the Bible out of one of the most amazing books of, of God's word. 2 Corinthians 5.21 for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Not that we become like the righteousness of God. Not that we might become righteous like God. No, we might become, become the righteousness of God. If you are in Christ, you are the righteousness of God. Like, how wild is that? That God on high looks down at me and says, Richard Allen, my son, you are an embodiment of my righteousness. You're covered. You don't need a security blanket. You are my righteousness, and that's your justification. You don't have to put fig leaves on. You're already covered by the blood of my son. You don't, you don't need all that. <sighs> it's crazy, isn't it? And yet we still grapple with darkness on a daily basis, even those of us who are covered. And you're probably, you're probably asking me now, so if I'm covered, if I'm absolutely justified, why am I still putting these fig leaves on? Why am I still in a desperate state of panic that there's something wrong with me? Well, that's your flesh. That's the flesh stepping in. The, the, the flesh, the evil part of you that you've been separated from. The part of you that's, that hasn't been justified. 
the part of you that you're going to leave behind when you go to receive your glorified body in heaven. That part of you is not covered. Your spirit that Paul differentiates from the flesh in the book of Romans, that's the part of you that's covered. That's the part of you that's you. And that's the part of you that's okay, but your flesh is still over here screaming, there's something wrong with me. I need to be covered. When that part of you is not even you anymore. This is why God calls us to fix our eyes on things above and not on things of the earth. But we still get pulled down and pulled down and pulled down. And Satan lies to us and tells us that our effort has something to do with the equation. And he he starts telling us that we have to we have to break those sinful cycles before we're going to become the fully thriving Christian that we we're meant to be when right now no matter what you're dealing with no matter how much temptation you still fall prey to you are still God's righteousness you can't get better than that satan is lying to you he is absolutely wrong about that when he says it he terrorizes us with fear um, he makes us listen to that part of ourselves that's afraid to remove those coverings. <laughs> Do you ever get tooth and nail with sin um, and end up losing to temptation because you were afraid? That part of you that, that, uh, that doesn't think it's covered. And this... This goes right into the uh, the second part of what I wanted to share. Um, <clears throat> the Bible teaches that we are saved, we are justified by faith, by belief in God's Son, by belief in His glorious sacrifice and everything that He did for us. That's what we're saved by. We're saved by grace through faith. So the opposite of faith is unbelief. So unbelief is what pulls people away from God. Unbelief is the producer of sin. It goes, it goes hand in hand with it. And so when you're covered by Christ, and then that part of you that is, is not uh, trying to glorify God, that part of you that is actually hostile towards God, is, is over here still screaming because it doesn't believe. And so each of your sins represent a deep place in your heart where you don't believe the gospel. The Bible even shows us the power of, of unbelief. There was, a, there was a time when Jesus was here where he was actually unable to perform miracles because people didn't believe. How crazy is that? So those those dark places in your life that you're where you're struggling, God is not able to work there because of because of your unbelief, um, mistrust and, and unbelief towards God, added to desire for the forbidden is what creates sin. And that those those seeds are planted in us every single day. And it and if you go back to Genesis three right before the sin where the serpent is tempting Eve and he's telling her all these things. And he's what he's doing is he's trying to twist her mind and get in her head and make her mistrust God in some way to take away her faith, to create unbelief. And that was what gave birth to sin ultimately in the end. Um, because of this, like whenever you're stuck in a situation where temptation is just hammering you and hammering you and hammering you, and you just really don't see how you're going to get through the night, and you don't, you don't think that you're going to come out of this on top, once that even starts, 99% of the battle has already been lost. Because that, that deep place in your heart where you're not believing the gospel, where you're not believing that you're covered, where... You are subconsciously desperate for a fig leaf. All of that is the deep 
causation for those situations where you get stuck mistrusting God, considering the uh, the the outcomes of if 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 you're going to give in, you know, maybe this one time isn't going to be that bad. Um, but deep down inside of you, you've got places that you've got to deal with. You've got places where you're not believing that God is enough. You're not believing that God is covering you. And um, everybody's sin represents the parts of the gospel that they don't believe. It's funny how that how that ties together. You take somebody who's going to the gym all the time, for instance. There's nothing wrong with exercising. There's nothing wrong with uh, getting all jacked. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, there are actually places in the Bible where you're encouraged to keep yourself healthy. Um, but there are people who frequent the gym because they just really feel like they really feel purpose in building themselves. And that's their fig leaf. That's, that's where they, they, they don't believe the gospel. They don't believe that Christ is their strength. And so they have to create the strength for themselves. Um, take lust, for instance. Um, Satan has planted seeds of mistrust in your heart. And he's got you asking questions like, does God really offer the intimacy I need from himself? Um, will he really satisfy me um, with greed? Does God really provide wealth um, with lying? Is the truth really good enough for me? Uh, worry. Is God really enough? He's not helping right now, so why will he help in the future? Satan's got you psyched out. That's why you, that's why you keep going to that. And... Even then, um, and this goes back to the Pharisees too, you can have all these fig leaves for uh, where you don't think God is enough and you're trying to fill the gaps. But there's other kinds of fig leaves too where you're like, wow, I read my Bible a lot. That's great. I read it for an hour every day. I'm a good Christian. That's a fig leaf. Um or you're you're proud of your prayer model. You think it really works. Uh, it's great. Or maybe maybe you uh, quit drugs, or maybe you quit uh, some other kind of addiction, and you're super proud of it. You think it makes you a better Christian. You think it makes you a better person. That's a fig leaf. <laughs> it's okay to be happy about things that God has set you free from, but when you start to uh, believe that you are a better person because of that, that's when it becomes a fig leaf. And I know this is super challenging. Um, it's so easy to fall into all of these dark corners in your soul where you're still irrationally screaming that you need help, that you need justification, that you need righteousness, when Christ is all the righteousness you need. Um, it's really easy. You and, and when you start digging into this kind of stuff and evaluating yourself, you will be shocked at the amount of fig leaves that you apply to yourself every second. It's 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 stunning. It's it's stunning what we do to ourselves because of what we don't believe about the gospel. Um So, that's the situation. And to take us back to the beginning, can you ever think of a time you felt the need to justify yourself? Those times were times where you really didn't think that God was, was covering you. And you felt the need to apply fig leaves and cover yourself. And what's funny is, we look at Genesis, we see Adam and Eve putting these fig leaves on, and if the problem was really a heart thing, deep down at the core of their soul, putting things, covering their physical bodies was definitely not the solution. But in their desperation, 
and in there just grabbing for something, anything. That was that was the best they could do. That's the same thing with us. These fig leaves that we keep throwing on are doing nothing for us. But we think they do. Because <laughs> in our desperate reaching for something, anything, you know, that, uh, that one thing we want to look at online, or that one more drink, or that one more side hustle, or just that, that one lie, or that one, that one thing that that success mentor said that I would be better for. Um, those are lies, man. Those are fig leaves. They're not going to solve the problem. There's only one thing that solves this problem, and that is Jesus Christ. And the only way to help yourself find a solution is to find ways to help to, to train your heart to believe, to have faith, to, to create more faith. And God's word is the prime place to go for this. His word is the remedy to everything. And taking his word deep to heart, um, it says uh, to overcome evil with good. Um, and God is good. So the more of God that you can pour into yourself and nourish yourself with, the more time you spend reading his word, meditating on his word, praying, lifting your voice to heaven, spending time with other believers and letting that iron sharpen the iron, um, to making sure that things that you are putting in your head are nourishing you and not harming you, and I'll talk more about uh, spiritual nutrition in one of my upcoming videos. I'm super pumped for that one, too. But we've got to nourish ourselves with the right kind of food. <laughs> Satan came at Jesus with Scripture. And when Satan is coming at you with the Word of God, the only way you're going to win that battle is by putting on the full armor of God and fighting back with the sword of the Spirit, which is God's Word. <laughs> That's what Jesus did. And we saw how it worked out for Him. So, if you're discouraged by this, don't be. Jesus covered you, and you are the righteousness of God. That's your identity now. Um, if you're feeling like, hey, I, uh, I really don't know. If I've got that covering, I just keep reaching for fig leaves and, and it just feels hopeless. Maybe, maybe God's calling you home. Um, I strongly encourage you to go back and watch my video on the gospel and just really take in the, uh, the life that God wants to offer you. Um, and if you're looking at this and you're just like, Wow, well, I'm really starting to see a lot of the fig leaves that I make. Um, and I'm really starting to come up with um, some stra strategies moving forward now that this uh, darkness in me has been exposed. That's great. Um, I'd, love to, I'd love to hear about any successes that you might have had as a result of taking in this truth and work through it with you. You know how to contact me. Um, and so I can pray for you, pray with you, um, give you some more encouragement. I love to do that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> but I really hope that this message is going to leave you challenged and encouraged and eager to, uh, take the road ahead with God going before you into this battle. Um, and I'm praying that everybody who sees this video is going to experience a real life change. Um, so I love you guys, and there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. So I hope you have an amazing week, and I really hope that God shows up in your life in a powerful way, and that you start experiencing freedom from a lot of the big leaves that have been plaguing you. Much love. Wish, uh, wish, wish you all go in peace. And I hope you guys.
guys have an amazing week. Bye.